Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real treat to bring up your headliner tonight. Uh, good friend, you may have seen him on Comedy Central, on Showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Michigan's premier storyteller. Let's give a big warm welcome, Norm Stoltz. Thanks, another nice hand for Kevin, and, and give my friend Steve a nice hand right there as they wander off, very nice. It is good to be back home again, good to be back in Michigan. I just got back from Dallas, Texas. I was out in Dallas, Texas. Doug English from the Detroit Lions, I remember Doug, football player. We've done a lot of celebrity golf outings and comedy shows around the country for a neck injury hospital out in Austin, Texas, and the Dallas Cowboys put together a big comedy show and big celebrity golf outing, and I, they, they invite me, I fly in. I'm flying into Austin, I'm all excited about playing, and, and, and I land, and they, the Dallas Cowboys send a driver to get me. Okay, which I'm thinking Dallas Cowboys are gonna send hookers and cocaine and shit, but they sent a driver, you know, it's okay. <laughs> they send a driver and the guy comes to get me, his hat's a little crooked and he's kind of walking a little goofy, and kind of a goobery looking guy, you know, and, and I'm not making fun of him, he had a name tag, fucker's name was Goober, okay, so I'm not making fun of him. <laughs> but he looks at me right now and he goes, are you forgotten? Hey, uh, hey, uh, are you forgotten? Hey, are you forgotten? And I'm like, am I forgotten? I'm Presbyterian. <laughs> now he's mad at me. Are you forgotten? He's pissed. And I look at a guy next to me who I did not know was from West Virginia. And I said, Am I forgotten? And this guy looked at me and went, Who got more days? You be don't born, don't do it. <laughs> I'm looking for a translator for the Northern Impaired at this point in time. Okay. Now, thank goodness I had brought with me my English to Goober dictionary, and I got that out. You can get them at Walden Books right next to the Spanish one. English to Goober, get one. And if you ever go south, I'm looking it up and it's on page 11. E-L-L-U-U-M, I ain't shitting you, page 11. I looked it up, it was in there. Are you for golfing? Did y'all come here to play a golfing with us? <laughs> yes, I did. My name's Norm Stoltz. He goes, you're a Yankee. You want them damn northern Yankees son of a bitch. You're Yankee, you're Yankee, you're Yankee, you're Yankee. I think, well, yeah, I'm from Detroit. It's been 200 years. I thought you'd be over that shit by now, okay? I said, yeah, I'm a Yankee. I guess I'm proud to be a Yankee. I never thought about it, but how could you tell? He points to another guy and goes like this. So I look over, there's a man standing there. I don't know the man. I'm flying alone. I look over, there's a gentleman facing away from us wearing a UAW jacket. Goober looks at me and goes, well, you spelt y'all wrong. I'm thinking, how long do I gotta be in Texas, okay? <laughs> we do the big golf outing. The following day, I'm flying back to Metro Airport. And I'm, I'm there in, in Dallas, Texas, and, and, I, and I'm in the airport, and, and I bought a USA Today. Now, I don't always buy this particular paper, but I was flying Northwest Airlines. Anybody ever fly Northwest? <laughs> Two guys are out there, they were kickstarting a turbo, trying to get one damn motor running, you know? <laughs> one guy was actually gluing something on the bottom of the plane, he's like, you think that'll hold, Larry? <laughs> So I'm whipping through the newspaper, and I'll be honest with you, I'm in the bar. Now, I don't like to fly. It's part of my life, and I have to fly regularly. I, I, but I, but I, I have a couple, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a couple adult beverages before you fly, okay? So, I, so I'm, in the, I'm in the bar. Now, it's only 10 to 5 in the morning, okay? But, you know, <laughs> but I'm drinking Bloody Marys. Now, anybody that drinks knows damn well you can drink Bloody Marys early in the morning because they got celery, and they're healthy, right? You know, so, so I had six of them, and, you yeah. And I had taken a Percodan and a Tylenol 4 and a little Valium 5 I keep with me, okay? For... See, I premedicate before I fly. Oh, you know, a lot of people, when they go to the dentist, they'll, they'll take some antibiotics, they'll premedicate so they don't get an infection. You gotta pay attention to what might happen to you. So before I fly, I, I premedicate. I, I take a Percodan and a Tylenol 4 and a little uh, Valium 5. I don't want the 10, I don't wanna get stoned or nothing. Because here's my thinking, if this plane crashes, I'm fucking walking out. It might be one foot hopping on its own and shit, but I am leaving the scene, okay? <laughs> you might see me on the news one night from Chopper 5. Well, Bob, there's a, looks like Flight 418's gone down. I don't know if there's any survivors, but there's a right leg going 30 miles an hour up I-290. That'll be me. <laughs> so I'm whipping through the newspaper there, and I'm in Dallas, Texas, but USA Today breaks stuff down by states. I don't know if you've ever seen this publication, but being from Michigan, I zoom in on Michigan to see what they're telling the world about our great state. Now, I don't know if you read these. There was a gentleman in Detroit having an asthma attack in the middle of the night. He reached under his pillow to pull out his asthma inhaler. But because he was from Detroit, he pulled out a 38 caliber handgun by mistake. <laughs> now, personally, I don't know how much asthma shit weighs, okay? I don't know. But I'm thinking even half asleep, I'd know if it was my gun, you know. And I'm sure they make a different noise. <laughs> this guy 
guy shot himself in the face. Now, he did not kill himself. He didn't kill himself or nothing. His nose is clear. You know, it's a uh, shit. It's, uh, it's clear into the neighbor's backyard. That's all. Uh, and another one I read, it, it was up by Claire, Michigan, which is the middle part of our state. Now, this is the very reason I've never moved out of Michigan. Okay, a lot of Michigan comics will tell you that. I could have gone to New York, I could have moved to L.A., but this is a damn good map. You know that. It's, it, it's a good map, and it's a good friend, and it travels. You know what I mean. And it, don't listen to them. Okay, but, it's, but it was up by Claire, Michigan, and a little article said a farmer named Rocky, now it didn't give his last name or anything, just had a farmer named Rocky was sighting in his deer rifle. That's exactly what the article said. It didn't have a G on the word. There was no G. This man was not sighting. He was sighting. <laughs> Apparently, he and his friends weren't actually going hunting. They were hunting. <laughs> Let's go hunt. Come on, put on orange shit and we'll shoot shit. Come on, go hunt. You know? There's a difference. Now, I think the difference is the amount of Jack Daniels that's in the truck with that fucking high-powered rifle. That's what the difference is. But it's said that he was sighting in his deer rifle and he mistook, he mistook his mother-in-law. <laughs> she was hanging laundry. Now, shit, deer don't even do laundry. <laughs> but it said he got a bad case of buck fever. Now, medically, I'm not sure what buck fever is, but I'm thinking it must have been some sort of a, like a really bad yeast infection for men. That's what I'm thinking. Because <laughs> it made him nuts, and apparently while he was a scratching, <laughs> he shot him. No, again, he didn't kill her. I don't want to make this morbid tonight. He didn't kill her. But what scared me, the article said, this guy shot this nice lady twice. <laughs> now, I don't hunt much, but I'm thinking, if you get a deer in the crosshairs of your rifle, and you're thinking, oh, I got one. <laughs> She's doing laundry. <laughs> if you squeeze off your first round, if your deer goes anything at all like this. Ow, shit, ow, God. Don't shoot her again. If your deer is speaking English at any time during the hunting part of your day. Now, personally, I'm a college graduate. How many collegiate people are in our audience tonight? Either been to college or in college right now? How many college people? Quite a few people. I studied drugs when I was in college. How many people did this? A few people. One guy in the back clapping with one hand. I did study drugs. I actually attended Wayne State University's College of Pharmacy, and I studied drugs. I studied antihistamines, analgesics, antipyretics, anticoagulants. I even once accidentally tried marijuana. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah. You ever read about it? Shit. You ever seen it on 2020? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about right now? Well, this next minute and six seconds is gonna suck really bad. I'm sorry. I did accidentally try marijuana and I don't advocate its use and I don't advocate its legalization. Sure, there's some medical problems you can use it for, but I don't want it, I don't want it mainstream. But I accidentally tried it when I was in college. What happened was I was on a camping canoe trip with a, for the weekend with a, anybody ever been in a canoe? In this room, by applause. How many of you people have been in a canoe? All right, so some of you might relate to this story even though apparently none of you have heard of marijuana. I'm on this camping canoe trip weekend getaway deal. I'm in charge of the equipment for the whole weekend. We put my friend Steve in charge of staples for the whole weekend. We get up in the middle of the Upper Peninsula, the middle of like Barriga, where you go to the store and it's like $82.95 for a Hershey bar. You know, you ever been up in this place? <laughs> we get up in the middle of nowhere for equipment. I brought a tent, two sleeping bags, a Coleman stove, and a lantern. For staples for the weekend, Steve had brought along four pounds of dope and some vodka. So we got up early in the morning and had some dope and vodka for breakfast, you know. I didn't know I was using marijuana at the time. He snuck it in on me. See, he was a doper. Now, you people have never heard of marijuana. <laughs> but a long time ago, there were people called dopers, and they would, like, take marijuana, bake it into a brownie, give it to Grandpa, and watch him dance for 45 minutes. They would do that. And these doper people, they were chemical geniuses. They could slip marijuana into your life without, you know, they could sprinkle it on the cornflakes, you didn't even get high. They could, they could bake it on the pizza. You, 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 you know, they could, he snuck it past me. He had slipped it into a little joint that we were splitting up there. And, uh, <laughs> we smoked breakfast. Then on the way to the canoe livery, we smoked what he called after breakfast breakfast. <laughs> then when we got to this canoe livery place, we stopped <laughs> smoking breakfast. <laughs> 
I got out of this car, I was high for the first time in my life, but of course I was trying to maintain. I think they call it high because your cheeks get so fucking high you can't see out of your eyes. That's what the problem is. That's what they call it high. So I'm standing there trying to be cool, you know, plus, you know, plus the trees are sneaking up on me. And an old Chevy truck pulled up with a canoe on top of it. And right away, I started thinking, get in. So I ran around the front of the truck. Well, I thought I ran. Steve timed it. It took 11 and a half minutes to get around the damn truck. I was having a little trouble cornering, you know, and for the first three minutes, I didn't realize my left foot wasn't even coming with me there, you know. I get into this truck and right away, right away, right away, right away, I'm thinking that the old guy driving is thinking that I'm high. Because he's playing 20 questions and he's starting with hard ones. Where are you guys putting in? Oh shit, I knew that. <laughs> We drove up here and then we had breakfast and then if the train leaves New York going 80 miles an hour. What the fuck are we doing here? Oh, 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 oh. The river? <laughs> Our guide puts the canoe right down by the river. Steve, of course, is in back getting the dope and vodka for lunch. And I'm negotiating the cliff. Now, if you've never been canoeing, I'll tell you what, you know, God has a sense of humor when you go canoeing because the road's always way up here and the river's way down there and some asshole always falls in the water and drowns. And, and I'm hoping that I'm not that asshole, you know? And I'm thinking, no problem, I'll just take one step at a time. But with my first step, I remembered a little of my physics. You will pick up speed. On the way down a hill, I took a step and then my other foot and I'm running. You remember being little running on a sand dude, your feet are hauling ass, your brain's going, hit a fucking tree and get it over with. I don't care right now. I'm seeing gym shoes up here, I'm going, shit, I hope those aren't mine, man. And just as I'm prepared to get wet and drown, thank goodness I hit somebody. I looked around, there were 397 people already at Cripple Creek. And they did not have the same breakfast. I said, hi. <laughs> And this guy looked at me and went like this. It was an entire outing of almost 400 hearing impaired people, which I think is fine, okay? I think it's great, but fucking not right after breakfast, okay? There was one guy, he was in charge. I think he was in charge because he jumped up on a rock and he started shouting orders. People started running around doing shit. And I said, Steve, I got to get out of here right now. We jumped in the canoe, I jumped in front, Steve jumped in back, and we pushed off into the river. But with the very first stroke of my paddle, all I could hear was, near, 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 near. <laughs> I'm looking for toothless hillbillies up along the ridge line, okay? And I'll be honest with you, my butt started to suck down on that aluminum seat. <laughs> this canoe could go over the edge of the earth, my ass is not coming off of this seat, I'm telling you that right now. If Ned Beatty didn't make it up the hill, I don't got a prayer in hell, you know what I'm talking about? So, I, so now Steve and I are going over the rules of canoeing. Because there's a lot of rules you got to talk about. And I don't know if this ever happened to you nice people, but sometimes the person in the front of a canoe and the person in the back of that canoe sometimes were like, they're like, they bicker. <laughs> Even if it is a loved one or a spouse, I found that out. <laughs> Unless, ladies, you can actually reach him with the paddle. right in the back of the damn head there. I'm sorry, I was just back paddling. It just slipped a little bit, just kind of winged you. Well, that was a two-hander, that'd be two minutes in any NHL game. Jesus, that was a, oh, Jesus. Oh, I can't believe you hit me in the You're just being a baby. You're still being a baby about last night. I'm not being a baby. I don't even care about last night. Why should I care about last night? Just because I got real drunk at the campfire and I passed out and you showed everybody my titties. I don't care because I love you. 
truque. What I found out that afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, is that the hearing impaired, they bicker too. They're just like you and I. They have the same problems, they have the same emotions, they just communicate differently. What happens, the guy in the back of the, of the canoe simply taps the paddle on the canoe, and the vibrations go up, and the guy in the front feels these, then he turns around and they chat. <laughs> Talking back, I think, I'm not sure. We come around one corner, I do not know what exactly happened, but the man in the back of this canoe was absolutely livid. He was pissed, he was beating the crap out of the canoe. <laughs> guy in the front turned on, the guy in the back laid into him. You stupid. I fucking brought you up here in the middle of nowhere. You are continuously embarrassing me in front of my fiance. <laughs> Shit, I had her all set to blow me and you're gonna fuck it up for me. Now, I'm a happily married person. How many happily married human beings do we have here tonight? By applause. Where's our happily married people in this audience? One, a gentleman a little slow right there to see his wife. Oh, man. Jeez. I'm happily married. I've been happily married over 20 years to my lovely wife, Sharon. So I want all you young people to know, thank you. I want you young people to know you can do it. You can get married and you can stay happy. Now, there's a, a lot of drugs and a lot of fucking money involved in the deal. I ain't gonna lie to you. Actually, my wife and I just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary, which is, thank you, 25 years we've been married. In this business, that's, a, that's an eternity in this business, but 25 years now, traditionally, that's called the silver wedding anniversary, and of course, modern, it's Prozac, you know that, just B.I.D., hell, I'm feeling fine right now, actually, but we were out in Vegas, that's what my wife asked, can we please be in Vegas for our 25th, can we just go to Vegas, you know, so guys, if a woman asks you for something little, like can we go to Vegas for the 25th, I, I called Catch a Rising Star, I was out at MGM Grand, and we were out in Vegas, for, that's all she asked, can we go to Vegas, and I made sure it happened, because that's the kind of man, I, 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 that's the kind of guy, that's, uh, that's who I am. That's all she asked, can we go there, and I made sure, you know, I made sure that's the kind of, now when we got there, all I asked was have the little blonde girl join us for a little menage, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a lie, that's bullshit, I'm kidding, I would never do that, the, the redhead, the sister, that's the bitch I wanted, but it didn't work out actually, it didn't work out for me. That's supposed to be every man's fantasy to have a menage a trois. That's supposed to be every man. I never, I never had a menage a trois. I had a mirage a trois. I was alone, but I thought I was with two girls. It's not the same, apparently. Just if you're thinking about two women and you're whacking, that ain't the same. <laughs> but we were out in Vegas, and I'll tell you what, guys, I broke even. Now, anybody that's ever been to Vegas knows if you can go to Vegas for a week, I was there seven days, a whole week. If you can break even, that's a damn good week. We had a good, I made six grand. She fucking spent $6,000, but we... But she bought some neat stuff. Now, she went, she, I did 13 shows. When I went on stage, she went shopping. That was our deal, okay? So she'd go out and, 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 and you know, there's a lot of nice shops, you know? And, and if a woman brings back something that you can use, you know, like a salad shooter. <laughs> but she picked up some really neat gifts. She went to a honeymoon thing at, at an Elvis shop. Now, you can't, hell, you can't go wrong at an Elvis shop, you know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> she picked up a honeymoon strobe light. You ever seen one of these? Honeymoon strobe light? She turns it on at night and it flickers real quick and it gives her the illusion that I'm still moving when she's fucking me and she loves that. Oh yeah, yeah. I just lay there and make faces. Ha, hoo, ha, ha, hoo, he, ha. Looks like I'm jumping all over the room and helping and shit and I ain't doing nothing. My lower back is not hurting over four months. Get one of them, I ain't shitting you, them are good. Married over 25 years to this beautiful, incredible woman. Now, we, the interesting part is my wife and I have been together since the eighth grade, and that is a true story. November 8th, back in the eighth grade, I asked her to go steady. You know, I had no idea it'd be for life. You know, she was, she was 13, I was 13, she had hooters. I'm thinking, hell, there's an idea, you know. <laughs> you know, I've seen them before, I just never touched one, and one day I did. And guys, if you think back to that first touch, and ladies too, that first flesh on flesh, that warm feeling, it's almost an electric feeling that come over your body when you realize right then and there. <laughs> Do you remember that special feeling that came over your whole body when you realized, at that instant, you realized that her dad was watching you? You little <laughs> So we're still together. That's one of the options that he gave me. <laughs> I still have both of my nuts. That was the other thing he was chatting about back then. 
Now, being a 90s kind of a guy, I used to take my wife for granted. Gentlemen, don't ever do this. If you're lucky enough in your life to find a good woman that'll spend her life with you, do not take them for granted. I used to take her for granted. I didn't appreciate the little things she did. Then she got sick. My wife had a problem with her gallbladder. She went in the hospital for a week. This was, and, and you know, you know what I found out, guys? As soon as she went, you know what I found out? A week is seven days. <laughs> you know, being a man, I thought a week was Monday through Friday with weekends off. <laughs> Not if you have children. And for those of you that have children, or if you know children, you know these little suckers want to eat like every day. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. Sometimes two, three times a day. They want something to eat, something to drink. Shit, none of them drive. They're all real short. You ever seen these people? Right now? As soon as she went in, I found out right away, hell, I got three kids. I thought I only had two. You know, I travel, I told you, I travel. And one of them, I'll be honest, one of, one of them don't look a whole hell of a lot like me. But I love them equally. You know, you gotta love your kids equal. So I love, or maybe not equal. I'm having a little trouble with that little Paco fucker. <laughs> it's not true, I don't have a Paco, I'm kidding. I had that week together. The kids and I, we're not close now. We bonded, you know, and I learned all their names and shit, and that helped me, I'll be honest with you. Little name tag, seating chart, didn't take me long. There was just three of them. I'm not stupid, I'm just short. You know what I'm talking about. And I went for quality time. Remember with dad? Quality time. Remember that dad time? You know that, get me a beer, you little shithead, and hurry up. <laughs> we had a lot of fun together. We went places. I took my children to the mall. I'm thinking, now here's an excellent dad thought. I took my kids to the mall, and I bought them each a whole bunch of stuff, because you guys know a dad without cash is just another guy sleeping with mom. So you know, you, you, know, you gotta go. You gotta go the extra mile. You know? We had a great time that week. We played games, we played a lot of games. They tricked me to playing computer games with them. Let me give you a tip, people. Never ever play computer games with kids. For cash. Don't, don't do that. I couldn't beat them. I don't mean beat them. Don't look at me like that, ma'am. I don't beat my children. I don't, I don't beat my kids for the simple fact these are the 90s and you can't. The glory days are gone, man. Looking around, I see most of us are part of that last generation. Our parents, what? They can slap the snot out of us. They never asked permission. You know, I was at the mall yesterday and this lady goes, Billy, do you want me to slap you? <laughs> that brought back memories of my childhood because I can remember my dad in the hardware going like this, Normie, do you want me to hit you again, you little asshole? No, uh-uh. <laughs> oh, your class ring pretty much took most of my forehead off on that shot right there, buddy. <laughs> I was never abused. I don't want you to think that. My father was the disciplinarian. Now, he would slap me when he thought it was necessary. It wasn't a democratic thing. Shit, we didn't chat about it or vote on it like they do today. <laughs> my dad hit me a couple times where it didn't make sense to me, but I was young at the time. But like sitting in church, you remember sitting in church dressed up 40 minutes in that sermon, you know what happens. <laughs> you know, there's no blood left in either cheek of your butt. Just trying to get a little blood up in there. You know? And dad in his wisdom, sit still. <laughs> oh, that'll help, dad. Shit, that ought to help. Okay. Of course, mom doesn't have a clue. Why don't you just sit still? I'm trying to stop the bleeding right now, actually. <laughs> if you could kick that eyeball that's rolling around over there this way, I'd appreciate it. Do any of you nice people ever remember being out in your own backyard getting a spanking? In your own backyard getting a spanking, suddenly you look up and you realize all your neighbors have turned into a goofy cheering section? Remember these neighbors in Haiti? They'd run over the fence, kick his ass once for me! You know? They'd get that wave going, kill that little fucker, kill that little... My neighbor hit his child so hard once, I will never forget this. He knocked this kid over the fence into our yard. I freaked out. My dad went running over. I thought he was going to help the kid up. Backhanded that little shit across the fence. His dad hit him back. They got a game going. They played to 21. My dad was a belt dad, too. I don't know how many people grew up here with an old-fashioned belt daddy. My dad was a belt dad. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. My dad was a belt dad. Of course, he was also an electrician, and he had that damn tool pouch on the end of it all the time. Oh, man. Those were channel locks, I think, Dad, right there. I don't know how it was at your house. My house it was real simple math. If Dad's belt came past the third loop, you were going to die. You know what I'm talking about? My dad got to the point in my life he could fake a belt. Remember that? Hey! He grabbed his belt buckle. I'd be out waxing the front lawn. Look how clean this shit is. What do you want from me? As soon as my wife went in the hospital, my whole house started to fall apart. Things that worked day in and day out, year in and year out, started breaking and pissing me off because I'm not a handyman. I'm not talking about this right now. I'm talking about fixing shit, but thanks for your help. I'm not a handyman. Let me give you an example. I don't know if any of you people have one of these, but in my bathroom, in one wall, on, 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 in my bathroom, there's a thing that's called a magic chute. And men, you can just jam dirty clothes down there and that shit will come back in your closet somehow the next day. That fucker was broke.
I tried to fix it. I sprayed WD-40 on and everything. <laughs> by Wednesday, I had my little boy by the ankles jammed his head down in that dirty shit. Gonna get them socks from Monday. Blue, green, I don't care. I gotta go work. There's a test. Grandpa taught me a test. Men can test socks. These might be good. <laughs> Poo, them are no good. No, nope, quit looking. I'm gonna wear the blue suit and the flip-flops to the convention center. We'll be all right. When my wife went into the hospital, she knew she'd be there for a whole week, so she left me a list. Guys, just a little list. Ladies, you know, there's a little list you gotta leave with men, like when to get the children up, when they go to school, when to pick them up after school, when they go to dance and gymnastics and volleyball and cheerleading and basketball and soccer and all this shit the kids do. I'm trying to watch hard copy, but no, I gotta dick around taking these kids all over the neighborhood. <laughs> then my wife put little hints on there. Ladies, you know how you write little hints sometimes to your men, like you don't think men are smart enough to pick up a hint? Like after get them up in parentheses where she had put clothes on them, asshole. That's a fucking hint. I don't need that shit from her. So I'm following this list. It's like Betty Crocker. I'm just checking stuff off. I am doing really good. Okay, now I didn't do perfect, ma'am. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, a couple little little boo boos, you know. And guys, you know, you make a little mistake, and the women will blow it all out like it's a big, you know, like like big deal. I accidentally put my little girl on a bus to Chicago. <laughs> you know, everybody's bitching at me like I need their pressure. I'm thinking that the state police and the 60 Minutes crew is enough fucking pressure for a Monday morning. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Then I accidentally sent my oldest boy to my daughter's dance class in a little yellow tutu thing I made him wear. <laughs> and I told him not to wear underwear because I thought that would be funny. <laughs> so that trial starts next Tuesday. So. <laughs> but at the bottom of Thursday, my wife had, do a couple loads of wash. Ha, ha. <laughs> Men, right on the note, my, right on the refrigerator where all my macho friends could see it, my wife actually put, ha, ha which is Oprah talk for dip shit. That's right. That's right, guys. That's what they say when they go, ha ha, that's a dip shit. You don't think you can do it. So I found the damn laundry room. Okay, I found it. It was, well, I looked for a couple hours and then my daughter came in. I gave her 20 bucks. She took me in the basement. Shit, I'd have never found it. You ever been down, you ever seen a laundry room? It's in the basement. Well, dimly lit, one light, cobweb, scary music. Oh, I didn't like it. But I got down there ready to do laundry, not only for myself and my family, but now, damn it, I was doing laundry for mankind. problems with laundry. Do you know why? Because women have rules. They have secret laundry rules and they don't teach men. Do you know all the rules? Do you ever walk up to a group of women, they're all talking, talking, you walk up and they go, sure, here he comes. <laughs> Fucking laundry rules. That's what they're talking about. Secret laundry rules. Do you know all the rules? Do you know the first rule of laundry? Everyone in this room knows the first rule of laundry. Here it is for you for free. Piles. Am I right, ladies? That's a laundry rule. I thought piles was grandpa's hemorrhoidal problem he's been bitching about for three years. She's right in my face. Did you use piles? Did you use piles? I'm like, well, shit, I had a big pile. <laughs> but I had a big machine. No. That ain't full. I gotta have a big machine. I gotta be able to fill the damn thing up. I put in 12 pair of blue jeans. And nine bath towels. Four sets of sheets, the front room curtains, and two snowmobile suits. I thought I needed touching up a little bit. <laughs> Well, she had a two by four over here. I assume that's what she jammed that shit down in there good with. I get it all in in one load and I'm thinking she's telling me this job takes her all day long. We're kind of milking the laundry part of the gig here, aren't we, Mom? But then later on when the machine was on spin cycle, I reached up to get bounced for the dryer and I accidentally rubbed up against the corner of the machine jumping around. And I may have found out why she's spending so damn much time down there now. Mommy, telephone, not knife to the laundry! <laughs> no wonder she doesn't want me. She's been humping Kenmore all afternoon, darling. <laughs> That's a 45 minute straight cycle. Now, I don't know about you guys at your age, but at my age, 45 minutes is a distant fucking memory. That's what 45 minutes is. <laughs> now, are you guys halfway married? There's a beautiful couple right here on the end. Are you guys halfway married? Are you halfway married? Are you married? Because you're not touching. I figured you, you were. Like, people that are dating are going, hi, honey, how are you married? People are like, get me a beer, bitch. Okay, you know, and it's different. But no, a lovely couple. How long are you married, ma'am? Because he won't know. Uh, you do know how long you married? September 8th, seven weeks and three and a half hours. Seven weeks? Well, thanks. Thanks for taking a break. Yeah. 
seven weeks. That's great. The newlyweds, well, t take it from me and take, you know, the Prozac. You're going to be fine. I, I wish you would. You got shit wrong with you. You don't even know yet. She'll tell you. And it was uh, Gary Kern is what that was. Now, uh, now, does she collect things? There's a beautiful woman. Does she? Uh, let me ask you a question, sir. Most men have never heard of these. Most women have. You ever heard of a little thing that's just called a, a precious moment? Oh, girls, aren't those the most gorgeous little porcelain dolls with big blue eyes and little Christian things? And they're just 400 bucks a piece. What do you think? What do I think? 400 bucks? It's a fucking car payment. That's what I think it is. Are you nuts? Okay. My wife and I had 18 friends. Week before Christmas last year, we're shopping in three different vans. We're going out to Trapper's Alley in Detroit, go to Windsor, get some gifts. My wife decides she wants to show all her girlfriends a place she found full of precious moments called Holly, Michigan. Now, Holly is the knick-knack, patty whack, give a dog a bone cap of the whole world. <laughs> They got nick and knack and brick and brack of bullshit up there with spin Walt Disney's head around in his grave. Don't go there. <laughs> and it's 57 miles from Detroit. I'm driving up I-75 in a snowstorm. I am so mad. I'm looking for somebody changing his tire just, you know, so I can pick him off and have a good time. The <laughs> we get up to my wife's favorite store. It's called Little Corner Store. It's about half the size of this stage. People, if you can picture 20 people that I know in half of this size. 10 people I don't know. Three kids I already don't like. <laughs> and a little dog in the corner. As soon as we walk in the store, my wife gets orgasmic. Oh my God! Oh, look at this! Oh God, look at this present! Oh, 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 look at this present moment! Give me this present moment! Buy me this present moment! Give me this present moment! And men, I am using the Universal Male Smiley Ventriloquism Act. Have you ever used this? You're not getting any of that shit today. Because okay. <laughs> no, they're $400 for a little porcelain piece of shit. You're not getting that, I'll tell you that right now. No, don't touch it. You break the damn thing I have to make. No, you can blow me right here. You're not getting one of those little dolls, okay? It's not gonna happen. Now here's what complicated my day up in Holly, Michigan. Before we left Detroit, everybody was hungry. We'd been shopping about five hours, it was time to eat, but because we were all adults, we had to vote. What do you want to have for lunch? What did you have yesterday? What gives you heartburn? What, I don't want to know what, what gives any of my friends heartburn or diarrhea for that matter either. I don't like to vote, I like being the dad. There's more power, there's more fun. We're eating at Wendy's, getting a truck. Shut the fuck up, you're not going, I don't give a shit. But no, when you're with your friends, you have to be polite, you have to vote, oh, I don't care, where do you want to go? I don't care, everybody voted on Chinese food. Now, everybody loves Chinese food, am I right? I'm sorry I don't like Chinese food. But I'm thinking, I'm an adult, I'll go there, I'll deal with it as an adult. I get to the restaurant, I'm looking at a huge menu. I want for come A, I want for come B, I want for come C. I ain't eating this shit, I know that. So I'm not happy and I close the menu, but ladies, I don't know if you ever notice about men, I'm being a little bit of a baby. I don't want to be here. On the back of the thing, it says, soup. I'm thinking, Norm, there you go. There's the answer to your prayer. Soup, what can the Chinese people possibly do to soup? I ordered a large bowl of Wong Dung Dick Drop Soup. Don't get that. Don't get it. The guy brought it over. Now it was hot, but had white shit on top. He goes, oh, that stuff very tasty. I said, well, she won't swallow it. I'm not going to eat it. I'm taking it right now. It I'm not doing it. So now I'm driving up to Holly, 47 miles. I'm pissed and I'm starving. Everybody else in the van is full of that MSG, that Chinese cocaine shit they put in the car. You know what I'm talking about? They're bouncing around the van like they're made out of silly putty and they sound like the chipmunks. What do you want to do? I want to slam on the brake, throw your ass through the windshield. That's what I want to do. Don't ask me about it. And I'm driving, I'm starting, I think I gotta get some food. And I see a sign up ahead for the fastest food in Michigan. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's simply called White Castles. And I'm thinking, there's the answer to my prayer. I can zoom into White Castle, get some gut bombs, get back on the highway. They'll never know I'm gone. So I zoom in. And because I'm just ordering for myself, I only ordered 20 of the double cheeseburger ones, okay? You know I ate those, and I knocked, I knocked back two of those onion ring logs, and I had six uh, shots of Jack and five beers, because, damn it, it was Christmas, and I was trying to get in the holiday spirit, okay? 42 minutes after I ate White Castles. I'm a little small store up in Holly, Michigan. and not a Pepsi in the house. <laughs> 20 people I know, 10 people I don't know, three kids I already don't like. A little dog in the corner. First five or six minutes, I feel fine. Then something hit me like, hit me like, hit me like, uh, like menopause. Whoa! <laughs> I broke out into a cold, clammy sweat and I thought to myself, God, let this just be a heart attack and not a fart happening right now. Because if I drop dead from a heart attack, my wife is going to feel pretty bad for some period of time. But I'll tell you what, if I float any kind of a biscuit. <laughs> in this little bitty store, I'm not going to get laid for a long, 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 long time. Now, sir, you're married just a few months. I'll tell you what, if you do something so wrong that she gets mad at you and she cuts you off sexually, being married less than a year, I'll tell you what, you're not going to make love till next Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> I'm married 25 years. I'm talking fucking August or September coming up here, you know what I'm talking about? 
So I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna have to stifle this fart right here, right now. And ladies, you might not know this, men are trained how to stifle. If you think back to the ninth grade, ladies, when you were in home economics, when you were, when you were learning how to bake cookies and stuff and balance a checkbook for us men, the gym coach was teaching every single man how to stifle a fart in an emergency situation. So I did the first thing all men are trained to do. Guys, you know what I'm talking about? The Marine Maneuver. Ladies, you ever seen your man use the Marine? You ever seen your man suddenly for no reason snap to attention and lock everything up? <laughs> Honey, look at this. Oh, I can see it. It's really cute. <laughs> Come here. I'm not moving. I want you to see this. I said I could. It's behind you. I'm looking at a fucking mirror. Leave me alone for a couple minutes. <laughs> Your body becomes a defense system. Uh, left brain, left brain, this is the sphincter. We are shut down, we are shut down. This is not a test, we're at DEFCON 5. DEFCON 5. We're at 9,700 PSI. If this sucker goes, we will be blowing shit off the bottom two shelves back there. I'm in incredible pain, my wife's oblivious. She's like, look at this precious moment, look at this. I'm thinking if this fart goes, you will have a precious moment you ain't never gonna forget. I'm incredible pain, I can't focus. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm so sucked up, I don't have nuts anymore. I got ovaries, they're up in here going, I don't know what to do. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna die. I'm thinking if I'm lucky, the fire will go into my bloodstream, cause an aneurysm, just fucking kill me right now. That's all I'm looking for. And then I got that Wednesday feeling, that hump day feeling, that, that I am gonna make it feel. And then something broke loose over here. Started cutting across the front of my stomach and I thought to myself, Houston, we have a problem. Now there's no doubt in my mind the next 20 to 30 seconds I will be venting some sort of a gas, okay? And men, you know, the only prayer I have to get out of this alive is to go right for the marine maneuver to the step spread maneuver or the SSM. Ladies, I don't know if you're familiar with the SSM or the step spread maneuver. That's where a man will pretend to reach for something over here, take a sideways step and last ditch effort to spread the cheeks of his butt as far as he can apart. Because every man in this room knows if you can get them cheeks far enough apart, you can get that all gas out with no noise whatsoever. And if you can get that fart out with no noise, you can blame the stink on that little fucking dog we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Couple things I want you nice people to know. Number one, I want you to know it's extremely difficult to go from the marine maneuver to that step spread maneuver. It is very difficult. I'm not getting, it's very, it's, and I also want you to know that I damn near executed that perfectly. The resulting emission was no gross macho Monday night beer ripper kind of deal. It was kind of soft. It was kind of feminine, actually. It was kind of, it was kind of like, kind of like. <laughs> but my wife was way too close to let this slide by. I cannot believe you just chopped a fart in this little bitty store in front of all my friends. You sick son of a bitch. You fart all the time. You fart in the car, roll the windows up, turn the heat on. That's bullshit. I hate when you do that. You fart in the bed, pull the covers over my head like I don't know. That little surprise ain't coming. You fart in church the other day, Rick Shannon, the choir off, Father Tom thought it was me, you sick son of a bitch, I don't want to have to fart, women don't fart, girls don't fart, women don't fart, I have never farted in front of you! You've never heard me fart, I don't fart in the car, I don't fart in the bed, I don't fart, women don't fart, girls don't fart. I said, you don't fart, because you don't close your mouth long enough to build up any pressure. It is good to be back in, in the Michigan area. I, I, uh, you know, being from Michigan, I love this state. And, and I got a couple of short flights coming up. Next week I go out to Los Angeles. I do a little something with ABC. Then I'm gonna be forming a, a Catch a Rising Star in Los Angeles for a week. Then I'm going to a place called the Comedy Store in London, England. I'm going back to Europe. And I'm really excited about going to Europe. I was there a couple of years ago with my son. My oldest son, my oldest boy is a gymnast. In fact, he's a three-time All-American gymnast, four-time state champion, USGF champion. He got a full ride scholarship to Michigan State University. And I like that, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I'm very proud of him, but I gotta be honest, as proud as I am, I'm glad he got the scholarship. Cause you know, being the dad, I've been saving for college for 20 years, eh, but I've also been working casinos, so there's only 106 fucking dollars in that account. <laughs> He's like, am I gonna go to college? Am I gonna go to college? I said, well, you're gonna go Monday and Tuesday. And after that, I got no idea. <laughs> A Couple of years ago, his gymnastics group went to the Costa del Sol in Spain, the sun coast of Spain, over by Madrid and Malaga. Beautiful area, 108 degrees every day, beautiful oceans, New beaches, so I'm thinking, you know, I should go. <laughs> Myself and the other two men that went, we thought it'd be our job as the men to patrol the nude beaches every day for three weeks. I ended up with a thumb burn on my tongue. 
I have a tongue burn. My tongue swollen. I can't breathe. They take me to an emergency room in Madrid, Spain. Little doctor comes out and goes, Senor, por que le ves dos de la ringa? And I'm looking at him going, Paco? <laughs> you motherfucking greasy head, Desi Arnaz, Baba Lou, playing son of a bitch, you. They get me out of the hospital, put me on the airplane. We're one hour and 45 minutes out of Madrid, Spain, over the Atlantic Ocean, and I hear this, bing, bing. Right away, I'm thinking, what the fuck is that? <laughs> now, you frequent flyers know this means someone important is going to talk to you. I'm expecting something like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Bob, and I'm your pilot. I haven't taken any drugs at all since 1955. <laughs> Cabin pressure's normal. We're at 34,500 feet, and just as soon as Miss Johnson gets off my face, we'll be landing in Chicago. <laughs> That's what I thought. I forgot I was on Iberia Airlines, which is the Spanish national airlines, and I did not get English. And if you speak Spanish, you know this will be broken. I heard something like this. I hope you can follow this. Bing, bing. Escúchame un momento, por favor, señores y señoritas. Say the any un poquito para para decirse para bofreada. A minor fuck up. We get to see if we can turn around. The 747 did a blue angel left. My friend Claude was in the bathroom. He pissed all over everything, okay. <laughs> Came back to his seat, he was trying to be nonchalant, but he had pee running off of his glasses. <laughs> half of my brain's thinking, shit, I'm gonna die. The other half of brain's going, fucking look at Claude over here! <laughs> People are freaking out in four or five different languages, running up and down the house. I'm next to my wife, Sharon, my oldest boy's with me, and, and, and I'm getting scared. I look over, there's an attractive blonde woman looking at me. <laughs> Plane drops, I look at the blonde, she's winking at me. The woman is winking at me like this. Now keep all of this in mind, people. The plane is crashing. People are freaking. Blonde is winking. Okay. I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna die right here. I'm never, my brain is like my children. I'm never gonna see my other two kids again. My brain, my children. I never took them to Disney World. I owe them allowance. I'm a shitty dad. My brain, my children. My heart is going out to my wife, Sharon Marie. Mother of my children, love of my life since the eighth grade. My heart, my wife, my heart, my heart. My dick is going, look at the blonde. Look at the blonde! <laughs> now the plane dropped about 3,000 feet. Just to myself, just way back here, I said to myself, if we're definitely, definitely going to crash. I'm going to jump this blonde. Just to myself, it was just a thought, and it didn't hurt anybody, because it was just a thought. It was a lot of pressure, I was on a lot of pressure, it was just, it was just a thought, it didn't hurt, it was just a thought. Then the plane dropped 8,000 feet. My mouth, on its own, says, Sharon, if we're gonna crash, I'm gonna fuck this blonde. Shit! <laughs> we better crash now, all right? Well, Sharon handled it extremely well. I want you to know my wife handled it extremely well. She gave me a kiss on the cheek and a hug. You know, comforting women can be when you want to be. I thought she was cute. She said, Norm, just relax and I'll be honest with you. <laughs> if we're definitely gonna crash, if we're really gonna crash, <laughs> see that guy in the blue sport coat? <laughs> I'm gonna fuck that guy in the blue sport coat. <laughs> Again. <laughs> ah! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great night. I'll see you, bye. Norm Stoltz, ladies and gentlemen. Let him hear you. Norm Stoltz.